Okay. Quality number two. What do you mean when you say that divine truth is of itself a thing apart and admits no variations or modifications? Yes, this is a very important thing about divine truth and one of its qualities. It doesn't allow people to modify it or change it. It is existing whether we know it or not. So, so if I can give perhaps an example. The law of gravity existed before humanity discovered it mm -hmm. and continued to exist after humanity discovered it. And humanity discovered it through a gradual process. And particularly in modern times, when I'm talking about the last couple of hundred, you know, four or five hundred years, we discovered it through a process of experimentation. We then, through the measurement of different instruments and so forth, we had the capacity to measure it even from a mathematical perspective. But once we discovered it, it didn't change. It was still stayed the same. It was still the same law that governed its operation. And this is one of the qualities of divine truth. Just because we haven't discovered something yet, it doesn't mean that the truth doesn't exist. Yeah. It still exists, even though God may be the only one who knows it. Mm -hmm. And as such, we can't expect to have our own opinions about it. Sooner or later, our opinions will have to change to suit whatever the truth is about it, God's truth is about the particular thing we're trying to discover. So, for example, mankind comes up with all these theories about what causes cancer. Yeah. But God knows the absolute truth about what causes cancer. Sooner or later, all of us on earth are going to have to come to terms with what God's truth is about what causes cancer and, and not we have our own theories about it. The way God's designed the universe is we won't eradicate cancer unless we until deal with we the do. causes. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Until we find out God's truth, we can't eradicate it. Mm -hmm. And this is what I find quite uh, interesting about this quality is that until we discover what God's truth is about any subject, we will not be able to fully understand what's going on with any subject. And, and this is a very important part of divine truth, that... It doesn't conform itself to human perception or opinion or human reality. It is the reality from God's perspective. And humans, of course, can create their own realities, their own ideas. Yeah. But, and just because everybody on the planet agrees with something, it doesn't mean it's true yeah. from God's perspective. Yeah. 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 So it's, it's, um, in, if we contrast that to our personal truth... Yeah, well, you know, that's... As we've contrasted in our first session, personal truth, basically, we can have as many opinions as we want and get away with it. Yeah. <laughs> We're allowed to take on any opinion we, we want when it feels good. But that's not the case with God's Yeah, truth. so our personal truth is changeable and God's truth is unchangeable. Unchangeable. Yeah. And it's unchangeable whether we've discovered it or not. It's, mm -hmm. it's immaterial to God whether we've discovered it or not, in fact. Whether we're aware of it, whether we know it, whether we have an inkling of it, doesn't matter. Doesn't it's, matter. It's, it's still, still the same truth. It still exists. It's still the same truth. And it exists whether science has discovered it, whether mathematics understands it, whether all, all, it's still mathematical and scientific, mm -hmm. but we might not have discovered the science or the maths that would explain it yet. Yeah. And so, but in the end, we, we will. We will discover as uh, any of the truths that are out there, particularly truths in the physical universe and the spirit universes, um, they'll all be discovered sooner or later through a process that we, but, but this process will not involve us negotiating with God and saying, I think it's my idea. <laughs> in the end, it will be saying, okay, I give up my idea and I accept that this is, this is the truth of it. Yeah. And it's interesting, I see people doing this in a physical way a lot. Like, you know, so when it comes to the, the discovery of physical truths, we're prepared to give up the idea that our opinion really matters. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting when it comes to emotional and spiritual and other types of truths, which are all still a part of God's truths, mm -hmm. we don't feel that, that our personal opinion doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. In fact, we hold on for dear life with our personal opinion generally, and that is a primary problem with mm -hmm. regard to this particular fact. When we do that, we are not understanding at all. God's truth knows of no variations or modifications. No matter what you do, you're not going to change it. Yeah. No matter, you've only got the ability to discover it or not. That's your choice. 
And within that as well is the idea that, or the truth that it's existed. It's really what you're saying, isn't it? It doesn't get updated. It's, no. It's existed before we knew it. It was exist it after afterwards. We knew, after we know it. And, and, and it, it doesn't change because we've discovered it. And it doesn't. And it still exists before we discover it. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a very beautiful thing about God's truth, isn't it? Is. It is. It is. Yeah. And one of the things that is beautiful about that, of course, is that is that it means that that God's not changing the universe constantly and changing all the truths on a daily basis, and so we're left in total confusion. Mm -hmm. You know, when certain things are engaged in a certain way, we always get the same results. That's the, that's the beautiful thing about this immovable aspect of God's truth, is that God's truth, when it is opposed, has a certain result, and when it is employed, has a different result. And it's consistent every time. Yeah. It's just like the law of gravity, consistent every time. And until we discover a higher law which can overcome it, yes. like the law of aerodynamics, the law of gravity will work consistently every time. We can send people to the moon understanding that law mm -hmm. because it's consistent every time. Yeah. And that's what's lovely about God's truth. It's very different to a human parent, isn't it? Very a human parent... One day says one thing, the next day says another thing, depending on the circumstance and situation. Yeah. And, uh, and this is one reason, in fact, why most people don't understand that God's truths are fixed and immovable. They, they think that God is like a human parent, and so they think that God's going to change his mind tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. not the case at all. It's always going to be fixed and immovable, and it's a loving thing that it is, because it allows us to discover it. And once we've discovered it, we know it for certain. Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful part of God's, this fixed and immovable quality of God's truth. So, yeah. so this quality number two, very important to understand as well from mm. a soul-based perspective. Great. Mm.